Hey guys, it's Ethan from Zimmer Labs. Uh, this video is for Alex. Just um, had some difficulties with his cross guard. I built this for him a couple years, two, two and a half, three years ago. Uh, he sent it back to me a few months ago uh, because it was broken, it needed a rebuild, um, and he wanted to add wireless sound to it. So I did that and sent it back to him, and then he basically a week later got in touch and just said, the saber's broken, it's not working, the recharge port won't work, the kill key won't work. He was super upset and so upset he actually told me he was sending it back and just to keep it and he didn't want it back. Um, unfortunately, he also tried to fix it himself. Um, but long story short, I got it back a couple days ago and plugged it in to my charger and lo and behold it charged up just fine there was nothing wrong with it so you know curious to see what the issue was and you know why he had such problems with it why it wasn't working for him i started looking into it and it turns out that the problem is and the culprit is this wall wart style charger well, most of you guys i'm sure are familiar with these these things suck okay i can't be uh, as strong in that as I'd like to be, but every single lightsaber I build for every customer I have, I advise them very, very strongly to get a real battery charger. Uh, these are an option, but they are really just borderline, borderline usable. Yes, it'll charge your, your lightsaber, but not always, and not real well, not quickly, and you won't know how charged it is, but at any rate, so... What I tell all my customers to get, every single one of them without fail, is this guy. Uh, it's about $35 on Amazon. Opus BTC 3100. It's a standard lithium battery charger. Four bays, spring loaded. You know, you just stick a battery in like that, it charges it. Now, in conjunction with this cable that I will supply gladly, you put this dummy cell into it, right? It, this charger thinks that's a battery and then you plug this end into your lightsaber and this charges your lightsaber and this will tell you everything you need to know as far as the statistics and information what your voltage is what's going on with your battery this will even fix your battery if it's damaged um, and this is fast reliable and safe um, but alas Alex didn't get one and this guy turned out to be the culprit now the main problem here is that this is really a short plug and it did work, it worked for him for a couple of years and as you can see it will it will reset the saber but just barely. The last millimeter is where it catches because this is so short but it's not long enough to actually get it to charge anymore and the reason why is because if you look real close you can see it's bent. Not a lot, just a little, but right down at the bottom there you can see a line and a, a dent um, where the, the tip here got bent. And when you bend these, that means on this left side here, this is shorter. It's only probably about a millimeter, but this is now a millimeter shorter than it used to be. And that one millimeter makes all the difference between this being able to charge a saber and not be able to charge a saber. So Alex, that's why you were having all the problems. Not because there was anything wrong with the recharge port or the lightsaber this charging adapter was junk. Um, you could fix it by bending this back or just by cutting a little of this plastic away so the tip was longer and you could get it to go all the way in there. But again, I'm going to tell you again that you need to just get a good charger. Um, you can get one for 15 bucks off Amazon. You don't have to get the Opus. You can just buy any Nightcore charger or um, Luke or Efest or you know any of those any of those name brand companies that are companies that make chargers just whatever lithium charger 4.2 volt will get the job done and it will be so much more reliable and it will save you from having tons of problems uh, but at any rate so like I said there wasn't actually anything wrong with the lightsaber but I don't know what Alex tried to do to fix it himself rather than just sending it back to me he tried to fix it and in the process ended up nuking the sound card so when I got it back it did work it did turn on but the audio was completely fried so 
I had to replace the sound card and um, I know Alex you told me to just keep the lightsaber but I'm not going to do that because it's not how I run my business this is yours you paid for it I'm sending it back now it's all fixed up it's got a new sound card in it profi board uh, which is an upgrade because it was running a TNC saber before no charge for that that's on me just do me a favor in the future don't try to fix it yourself just get in touch let me know what the issue is we'll troubleshoot it if we can fix it we can fix it if we can't send it back to me and I'll fix it here um, and please please for the love of God throw this thing away and buy a decent charger uh, and if you do that you won't have any problems going forward with that guarantee um, the other cool part about this is, like I said, he wanted wireless sound. And the reason is he does live performance art with lightsaber dueling and, and the like. I'm not exactly sure what he does because I haven't seen his show, but he does it pretty seriously. And he, he, you know, he relies on the little tiny 22 millimeter speaker that's in here. And it's it's very unlikely that the audience is really even hearing that. So... We wanted to have something where this lightsaber's audio would go out through the PA system or whatever stereo system he uses for the audio for his show. Um, we tried doing Bluetooth, but the Bluetooth didn't work, um, mostly because Bluetooth and lightsabers is still kind of a new thing, and it's still we're still kind of working out and working out the kinks to try to make it work all the way. But long story short, it's almost basically impossible. I mean, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's pretty close to get audio output to go Bluetooth out to a stereo from a lightsaber. There just isn't the software or the hardware out there yet to do it. Um, now, I know I say that, and I'm sure some of you guys are going to say, no, actually you can, and you do it this way. But with the room available inside this hilt, which is basically zero, there was no way to make it happen here with Bluetooth. So what I did was go um, 2.4 gigahertz UHF ultra high frequency and the cool part about this is that first off this is the transmitter here and it is removable clips on here and plugs in here so you just get a little port right there so this doesn't have to be there all the time only when you need it um, and this has a range a working range of about 160 feet um, according to the manufacturer so this is going to work really well for you on stage, Alex, because you're going to be able to go anywhere on stage and this is going to still, the signal is still going to get over to your PA system, no problem. Um, and it's going to be a lot more reliable than Bluetooth would have been. Bluetooth's great, except the signal strength is still not real, not really terrific for Bluetooth. I'm, I'm not kind of surprised, considering Bluetooth's been out for you know, 15, 20 years now, you'd figure that they would have gotten it down. But at any rate, UHF is a much more reliable better quality uh, signal. So we've got the transmitter here and then on the other end is just the little receiver. It's got a mono headphone jack output and I rigged up a adapter that turns that into RCAs to get it into my shop stereo here. I'm just going to turn it on. Turn it on both sides. Get a little blue light. If it's solid here and solid here, that means they're connected, which it is. And that means now your audio is... Oh yeah. So I'll turn it off so you guys can see the difference. Actually, I'll just turn it down. Okay, so now this is just the, the lightsaber. Here, how much louder that is. So that's totally connected and super loud. Pardon the uh, pardon the dog. Um, and hopefully this works out well for you, Alex. Um, like I said, the buttons, the switches here are magnetic plungers. So just bear that in mind. I don't expect that they'll go flying on you during a show, but if they do come out, that's okay. They're designed to do that. Um, the reason I made them this way is 
for ease of accessing the internals. Because this used to be about an hour to take this guy apart and like three hours to put it back together. Now, with that change there and making the side blades removable, it's five minutes to take this guy apart and ten minutes to put it back together, which is a huge help uh, for repairs or upgrades or whatever. So, for the future, to the extent that you do need um, any work on this guy done, it's going to be much quicker and easier and less expensive, therefore, for you. So, um, I will get this guy back in the mail to you. Uh, your job is to go on Amazon and buy the Opus BTC3100 version 2.2 charger. Um, I will send you the charging adapter along with this guy that you'll, will allow you to plug this into the Opus. You can use it with any of your lightsabers as long as they have this style 2.1 millimeter recharge port. It'll work for any of them. So, well, assuming that it doesn't have a crystal focus in it. If it does, then it's probably 8.4 volts and you won't be able to use it. But anything that's got a standard one cell battery in it, you can charge it. Um, and when you get the wall plug E back, just, just throw it in the trash, please. Um, save me the headache, save yourself the headache, and toss it. Um, and sorry for the difficulty, sorry for the frustration and the stress I, that I know it caused you and uh, hopefully going forward you won't have any issues with it and you'll just be able to enjoy it. But thank you and thank you guys for watching.